Now some of you may remember, some of you may not, but I had dug this big pond. It's like 13 foot long, two foot deep from the substrate. It's actually close to two and a half feet deep and four feet across. The whole point of building this, the reason why it's all squared up like it is, is for breeding and function purposes for that cage. Well, many of you guys remember these fish, absolutely beautiful fish, the Dacosium assimilus. I know some people may say Aspara, but Aspara did not exist when these were out. These are assimilus barbs. Anyways, rant over. I know a lot of people will disagree, but we can agree to disagree. But these are what we're gonna focus on today in our project. These are pretty old. I've had them for a real long time. I would say they're probably about seven years old now. But you see some smaller ones in there. I do have babies of them. So, I'm gonna take a little risk with these guys. But hopefully we'll get a big reward. As you can see here, I've got cardboard on their tank actually. On the other side as well. See, I come in through that door when I come into the fish room and it usually distracts these fish. So I was thinking maybe if I cover them, maybe I'll see some babies like I did the last time. But last time I bred them, algae had actually covered around this whole aquarium. And it wasn't until all the glass was covered with algae that I saw babies. Now I haven't been able to replicate that and I think a lot has to do with the fact that I've got way too much plant in here. But it was a double-edged sword because they love to eat that plant. Guppy grass. You can see they've been eating on the bacopa as well. And none of these different methods have been working for me. I did get them to breed twice. Which up above them here, I've got another pair from last time they bred in here. Where are they at? Come on little babies. Actually, pretty good size. Well, now that, of course, they're not showing up. But I tried braiding with this kind of rock pile. Pile didn't work as well as with rocks all the way over it. But I think the tank needs to get dirty for them to braid. Yeah, here they are on the other side, being shy. So I've got a pair up here as well. So I've got backup. But with these guys being egg scatterers, I've got a plan. Right in the office here, getting the breeding barb cage ready. It's gonna be a big custom build. Let me go ahead and get my pieces cut here and we'll jump into it. And to save you from the boring parts, went ahead and cut them out. Now you can see I've got my width, I've got my length, and then this will be my height. So at each corner, I have this connection piece that goes from there and then up. Then side braces, T, middle T, another side brace T, then the same on the other end. So this is gonna be the bottom of the breeding cage. So this is a light diffuser egg crate material. And as far as the tubing, it's a half inch PVC. This is all schedule 40, half inch. So I'm gonna need 10 for my height. I was going long ways and then I decided to put in a brace. So I'll have to cut these in half and I'll have all those pieces. So here's my measurement. And then this will be cut in half minus a couple inches because I gotta count for this space. And before cutting, I went ahead and made sure it worked as far as the size by staging it up first. So now I pretty much, all I gotta do is go ahead and put it together. And as far as figuring out my height, I've got this hardware, I've got this hard plastic mesh that I'm gonna wrap around it. And it does have like a little lip. So I went ahead and went half an inch shorter. So this space will be on this part instead of being up here. I did cut it slightly shorter than this. That way this will overlap. 
So let me go ahead and get this all put together. Which the half cut is at 23 and a half, and then it's plus, which is like a 16th. So roll down to the wire. And to find this space, I just measured the middle. 46 7 8 divided by 2, which is 23 and a half plus 1 is what I call it, which is a 16th. And this breeding cage is going to be 8 foot by 2 foot by 2 foot, roughly. I'm going to take that inch out. I would line this up with this line and this line. Then, boom, boom, cut, cut. All right, you can see around the edges here, I've got the frame of it built out. Now, since this is two separate pieces, I'm going to use zip ties. Now, I went with a bunch at the edge, then every other one, then a bunch at the edge again. Because I'm going to be pulling this in and out, I'm going to go ahead and spin these down too so the fish... We'll end up cutting themselves on them at some point. There we go. Now I got the middle seamed up here. One nice strong piece. And I'm going to start working my way up. Which I'm going to need a bigger space because this thing is huge. Had to move it down to get some space. Go ahead and get these on. All right, we got the frame going. I need to make another one of these because I'm going to use that for the top as well. As I mentioned, we'll have to wrap it with this and zip tie all this around. Which this is like quarter inch plastic netting. Now it's time to wrap this thing. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one on this corner and work my way around it. Now when I'm tying this here, I don't want to just tie it like this. I'm actually going to take these off eventually because I'm wanting to tie in all together. So I'm tying into the great part all the way around this so it's one tie holding it all together i'm gonna work my way down then we'll get the other top and do the same with it but on one side we'll do it a little different you'll see is it overkill probably being eight foot i probably could have went four foot actually probably should have that way they would have been used to the four foot whenever i move them out but with the age of these fish Let's let them run wild. Screw it. Should fit in there, so it'll be good. I'm working my way, zip tying it down. It'll take a minute. Now, as far as this netting here, I did go ahead and tie it up to the top because I want something that'll be easier to get into with my top. That's not such. That's not so fixated, and I had to cut it. Something I can like twist. Maybe something more like a twist tie, kind of like a bread bag. But as you can see, I'm still missing half of this. Now the roll wasn't long enough to go all the way around. If it was four foot, it would have been great. But I went ahead and stopped at this corner and this corner. And what I'll do is I'll overlap. See this one overlaps here. And then I'll overlap the other one over to this side. That way it creates a overlap seam. And, it'll, and I won't have to worry about fish getting stuck in any like cracks or crevices or weird spaces. Right, other half done. You can see these are all still hanging out here. But what I did was when I ended up tying up at the end, I took some of these smaller zip ties and tied these down. It was actually tight enough that I didn't have to really tie these two together. But I figured, better safe than sorry, because this is hardcore. There's nothing they can get through. So 
So let's clean it up. Although that is done, there's still a bit to do. And I also went around the post on the two corners. Not on that one, but just the two where I had to mesh them together. All right, it is done. Now the next step is I gotta get some floaties on the side of it. Then we're gonna go test how well it actually floats. If it floats and doesn't sink, I'll have to drill some holes in the bottom of these PVCs just to let water in, waterlog it a little bit, and it should stabilize and then end up floating where the floaters are. So I'm gonna need some pool noodles. I gotta get the pool noodle zip tied on, but before I do that, I wanna go ahead and test it out. Also, before I do all that, I gotta run all the hot water out of here before I add it. And you can see the pond is pretty far down. Now I want this to be as cold as I can get. So it's been in the 90s around here and I don't wanna bring those barbs out into the middle of the heat. So I didn't rush this. Hopefully this will keep it cool during the night. And then in the morning, we'll try to add the barbs that way it won't be such an extreme difference between the water temperature because i know it's at least 80 something in here and they're in 70 mid 70s inside but they're going to love the heat when they get into it i just don't want it to be too much of a transition the fish that i put out here they didn't even care all right i got the sweet precious lady lrv here she's going to help me test this basket we're gonna at least see if it floats or sinks so i might have to drill holes no i think it's sinking so actually that sits pretty perfect or it's not having to drill i think i might not even need floats well i will need floats to stabilize side by side it looks like yeah nice yeah, so we will put the floats on the side We'll put them a little high. I like this being higher up. That way the top isn't just right at the top of the surface. And they do have kind of some space to go up for air if they want to or just feed off of it. Sweet. All right, let's pull it out. And looks like the water level comes up to right about here. That'll tell me where I need to put the floating stabilizers. Back with the lovely Lady LRV here. We got the floats on. We're ready to go. Let's do it. Oh, that's cool looking. Did you see that? There we go. Braider basket is in. Now it won't like flop over side to side. Is it on the bottom? No. Push it. Yeah, no, it's not on the bottom. It's just floating. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> All right, now for the barbs. And we gotta figure out how we're gonna keep our top on because I want it accessible. I would just hate for them to jump out. That's cool though. What do you think, Lady LRV? I think it looks great. I think they're gonna like it, but yes, I want them secured. Our babies. I right, got a bunch of guppy grass in here still. Oh, I didn't pull up. Oh, I about fell in. I didn't pull up well. At least if I did fall in, it's hot out. It'd probably feel pretty good. Oh, that did not pull up as well as I thought it would. I thought it was going to come up clump like the algae. I got to get down to the roots. I could always add some of their guppy grass with them that they had. So yeah, we gotta figure out the top and then I'm gonna throw in just a couple of the mascara barbs to start with, I think. I might go for it all. Depends on what I catch. I don't know. I don't wanna make two steps out of it. I don't think they're gonna die because, well, I wouldn't put them out here if I thought they were gonna die. But this is a big risk, but could be a big reward for everybody that loves the mascara barbs. 
All right, last step is done before we move the barbs in. Zip tied this PEX tubing, this half inch PEX tubing. That way I can just set this on top of the frame and I actually tie it in and then I can just lift it up whenever I need it. What a bad idea. This is an absolute crazy moment for me right now because I've had these guys for a long time. I really hope nothing happens to them. All my other fish I've put outside, they've been doing good. So I really don't think something will, but you know, it's just that chance of risk. Well, we gotta catch these guys. Thing to do is drop the water level down. So I'm gonna get it about halfway. That way it's easier to catch these guys. They're not flying up, trying to fly up and out. The net will be. And I gotta do this the old fashioned way because my my pumps I got for the system don't work because uh, Vever pumps are crap. They can't handle humidity. I don't know what's up with that, but not happy about it. So we'll get ye big hose here. What is this big old hose? I don't need all that. That's what I need. Sorry, babies. I'm gonna be nice, slow, and gentle with these guys. Wow, look at that protein film on top. Holy moly, that protein film is thick. That has got to be the thickest protein film I've ever seen. Dang, maybe they're ready for this. Get our pump wet before we start it. It hasn't had water on it for a long time. All right, water level is down low. All the barbs are in the guppy grass. Go ahead and turn the lights on a little early for them, but we're not too far off. Oh, look at that guy. And since they want to hide in all that, we're going to throw that into their breeding basket. Look at the protein film. Oh my goodness. I could do a huge water change in here because I got tons of beneficial bacteria, obviously tons of protein in there for it to eat off of. But let's go ahead and grab this out. I don't want the algae. Whoa, I don't want the algae bit. Spooking them. They don't like it. I don't want them to hurt themselves. Whoa, 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 guys. Did you hear that? Oh, they're going nuts. They didn't like that. I gotta be able to see him, catch him. Yeah, they seem to like it. I was half tempted not to throw any of this bacopa in there, but they do seem to like it. Right. Yeah, no, this is exciting. Now that I see the basket again, I've been busy. I haven't seen it for a while since I set it up. I did go out a couple of times and was like, ooh, look at that. No, this is good. Split this guppy grass up. Oh god, I can't even reach that. It's guppy grass. You see the difference from the old stuff and the new stuff here. Outdoor grown guppy grass compared to indoor. So it'll take a little bit for this to transition, but it'll be good. Let me get some of this stuff. Just a little bit. I can see in here really well. Alright. Here you go. Wow, look at them beauties. Easy fellows. Easy, easy. Now's the time. Beautiful fish. Gotta take a little time to appreciate these guys before I throw them out there because I won't see them for a while. At least face to face. 
But I hope they make lots of babies. Here we go, guys. Ready? Get my net wet first. Always best. Wow, they were really hunkering in. All right, I'll start with three. Whoa, easy, easy. Guys. Oh, God, that one's getting beat. <laughs> In they go. God. One on the bottom. I think I got whapped a little bit. They're in. Let's go get the rest. Alright, I think I'm going to grab them more one by one here. Because I just don't want them beating on each other, flapping around so much. It's a lot nicer on this way. Wow, look at that fish in the sun. Look at the blue and the red on there. My goodness, that is gorgeous. Holy cow. Number six, this is a Doc and Sia Assimilus Barb, but look at this thing in the sun. Look at the colors there. Ooh, easy buddy, come on. With the blue and the red and the orange and the green. Black and the white. God, what a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Now yeah, to breed them. Alright, number seven here. See them all grouped up over there. Little cuties. They're going to be able to stretch their fins in here. They've never been in anything this big. So this should be a nice treat for them. They're going to get a lot of live food for the first time. And more space that they've ever ran in their lives. So look at them go. Look at them. Checking it out. Trying to figure out their area. Now there's four of these little ones left. I'm going to go ahead and put them up there with those other little ones. Maybe they'll breed in there. And maybe I'll get eggs from this. But before I do all that, I'm going to keep my nets wet. I'll come back to that. Oh, fuck it. Ow. Motherfucker stung me. Shit. God, I just got stung by multiple wasps. I don't know what the hell just happened. That happens fast. Woo. We'll get back to what we're doing here. I'll just rinse this off. Look at the Goodyead Pond. But yeah, that stings. That's gonna hurt. My arm is red, turning red everywhere. Whew. Well, at least I got this to chill out to. Wow, look at that shrimp. It's like a neon green. What is that? Look, two of them. Like neon green. You see that shrimp down there? And there's a yellow. Now, how did that get neon green? Well, there's another neon green one all the way down there. There's a lot of the neon green. Just take the yellow out and leave the neon green. You can see there's a ton of goodies in here too. Now, to figure out wherever my net went. I don't know where my net went. I flung that thing. It's those guys right there. You see them? They're pissed. It's because they got babies. They're going down tonight. Where, there's my net. Flung it all the way back here. But anyways, back to what I was doing. 
Since these are just absolutely loaded with live food. Oh my god, look at all that Daphnia. Look at that Daphnia. It's a lot. Alright, so. We got to run by the wasps. And so I'm, actually, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to have to take the long way. Little... Let's go. Hurdle, hurdle. All right, now these guys are going to get a special treat. I ain't going to know what to do with all this. I know they'll be happy. That's all I know. Let that Daphne has spread around. They've been hunkered in this corner. We'll start moving them that way. We'll watch them feed. Hey, babies. Come on. Now, I'm not going to force them to do nothing. If they want to hunker in that corner, that's fine. They'll find the Daphne later. I'm not going to force them. Let them go at their pace. No, I do have a bunch of mosquito larvae too. Might as well get them some of that. Get them. We'll get them all the good stuff. You even got a little pearl weed in there. I don't mind if pearl weed grows. Let's put this right over them. all the bugs in here too things the babies can eat god i hope they have a ton of babies you guys saw how beautiful those fish were and you know it's not easy to get that exact fish because some people try to sell it as is but they often come in as filamentosa rohani or something else not these actual assimilus barbs i know some people may call them aspara barbs but the spar barbs weren't even around when these came out, so these have always been a similar barbs. That's what I bought them as. And I don't even know if that's the same fish, because I've never actually had a spars. Alright, let's get the... Oh. I'm going to get the top in. Hope this bend doesn't bend too much. I should have put one towards that middle there. If we got to modify it, we will. Sneak up on them, see if they're, oh, they're still in that corner. They're moving around a little bit. I think they're starting to get a bit of that Daphne. There they go. They're figuring it out. Hey, I don't want to scare them yet. Get some food, let them feel comfortable. It's a whole new thing for them. Whole new world. Alright, I'm gonna get this lid on. The devil. Alright, I like that. that. Works good. That's nice. And the good thing is, they're used to that too. So this will still let mosquitoes in. Other things. I think I trapped a wasp in there. Guess that's what he gets. Go ahead. Let's let him out. Even though he's stung me, probably. There you go. Two of them. But the mascara barbs are used to this kind of top, so that shouldn't really bother them. But I like it. I like it. Let them marinate. We'll let them do their thing. I do like that I can still see them down here on this corner. And also down here a long ways. I really like that cage build. Because I can see the fish. Well, I genetically modified my arm with some wasps. Should have all the punching power now. Punching power of God. It's best to see him when the sun is actually shining in there. Once that shadow goes in, I can't really see much of them. But the barbs are settled in. Their new home. Wish me luck. 
hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button that helps and if you haven't subscribed yet hit that subscribe button as well keep you updated on this thanks so much for watching i'll see you on the next one